So we're here with a sponsored show. We're understanding DPUs for network engineers with our sponsor, Dell Technologies. Joining me is Joseph White. He's a fellow at Dell. And we're going to be sort of uh, running a quick overview so that you can understand what a DPU is from a networking perspective. And we'll be talking mostly about the fundamentals of what we're going to get onto. So, Joe, let's start off with the basics here. What are the three fundamental capabilities of a DPU that if you're an infrastructure professional out there in the real world doing the real work, what is it that you need to know about the fundamental physical capabilities? Yeah, so uh, as you said in the intro, a DPU is an evolution of some ideas that have been around for 20 years in the industry. And those ideas involve a combination of offload, acceleration, and isolation. Um, and the core here is that all of these together are now at sufficient density to be valuable. Okay? Mm. So you have a CPU yeah. complex. So what you're saying yeah. here is there's a yeah. there's an inflection point here where our hardware has gotten so much faster. So like memory, CPUs, you know, this whole capability is that all of a sudden we can make a network computer on a NIC type idea that we weren't able to do before. And that's, that, that's a key driver. That's right. It, and, and it's not just the speed, it's the density. So mm -hmm. the ASICs are now dense enough to have offload components, programmable hardware, mm -hmm. CPUs, memory, network, packet processing. That combination right. allows you to do a whole bunch of flexible things. Yeah. Right? And so I can use the ARM cores to host an application. What kind of application can I host? I could host an independent application to run my control plane. I could mm. host something that assists a program running in the uh, CPUs, your x86 cores, with not wh where they know that that offload is there, I can transparently yeah. offload and virtualize. There's a whole set so of things. That's, that's out pretty there. much like GPUs. Yeah. We've got GPUs doing graphics offload, and in some cases we have AI processors or TPUs. Yeah. They used to be called TensorFlow processing units, but now they're called AI chips because you know marketing or something. We have the CPU running general purpose stuff. Um, so really, the DPU is about accelerating. Yeah. Actually, it's not just about accelerating NICs. It's actually about accelerating a whole range of things. Because as I said before, it doesn't just accelerate data transfer. Also, some companies are using it to accelerate storage as well. We're talking, you know, That's vSphere right. is rumored to be putting somebody together with putting the vSAN agent onto the NIC as well. That's right. So I could, so because the uh, DPUs are general purpose themselves and have a variety of hardware accelerators, um, I can apply them to networking problems and storage problems and control plane problems and firewall security problems all at the same time. That's the key, mm. that I can do all of these things in different combinations as needed for the solution and the um, uh, application I'm supporting. And I can do it either in concert with the application or transparently. It's it's right. really that so, combination that's the evolution from from the older ideas of smart deck. Yeah, and so we've got this really interesting idea where the DPU is sort of a computer on the board, and so I can now run it as a hardware accelerator. So instead of running, you know, segmentation and reassembly in the kernel and running non-maskable interrupts to the CPU, so it has to stop whatever it's doing to pull the data off the NIC, which as you get to 100 gig and 400 gig, you, you can't you can't just keep masking those interrupts to move the data off. You actually want to offload that so that you can get going at maximum speed, right? And so we're seeing this sort of hardware acceleration by moving loads off the cores, but we're also seeing this ability to run software. So we're still running software on the x86, but saying over here on my DPU cores, I might be running an application like a, a firewall or a load balancer or something like that. That's right. There's a there's actually a huge laundry list of potential applications. You set a few of them. Uh, addition, mm -hmm. Additionally, I can assist Kubernetes, so I can do um, uh, CSI and CNI acceleration. Mm -hmm. I can do local switching. I can have the DPU be a packet switch. And so mm -hmm. if I have multiple ports, if I had eight ports, I could be part of a small uh, mesh network, especially in an edge deployment. Um, I can do telemetry collection and uh, pre-processing so that I can I don't have to have as 
big a server farm to do my uh, telemetry, and that'll eventually support AI ops. Um, there's just a, a laundry list of things you can do. I can be a network gateway. I can do um, uh, overlay and tunnel termination uh, in a variety of ways. I mean, the the possibilities are really endless, and we've just scratched the surface, right? We've just yeah. got GPUs in the current generation coming out that are good enough, cost-effective enough uh, to start doing all these operations. Yeah, one of the other things that we're talking, I've heard talk about, this is this is very much in the future. This isn't a now, now, but this is an evolution is we're seeing NSX with its security tools in particular, and they're talking about putting the threat inspect, threat detection, threat inspection that the NSX agent has into that NIC so that you can do threat inspection at 100 gig, at 400 gigabits per second inside the server. Instead of having an external unit doing those security functions, you can actually get it right up on the server, right next to the hypervisor. So think about that from a scaling point of view. Every time you add a server with a smart NIC that's using it for security firewalling, application firewalling, you're actually adding capacity to that firewall, that security capability. And that's the evolution of where we're going. To, I think in the short term, it's reasonable to say, Hardware acceleration on day one, it'll start to run software in day two. And then at some point down, we'll actually start to see this control point, the security model type thing emerging where we're actually doing all of the network services or a lot of the network services inside the DPU. And when we go on to the next slide, we can sort of break that down and you can see the schematic, how there's a, there's a hardware asset doing the forwarding. We've got the CPU, we've got flash and SFPs. That's basically the idea here, isn't it? That's right. And um, so the way I like to define a DPU to kind of uh, finish up is it's effectively a microprocessor uh, or rather a microserver optimized mm -hmm. for data flow and packet processing, providing accelerators, offload engine, and local services that presents mm -hmm. virtual functions to the host and um, works in concert with its hosting system and with the wider cluster to yeah. optimize um, basically solution and application deployment. And and this is all emergent. This isn't all today. And we're going to talk more about some of the <laughs> some of the implementation, you know, the implementation details that go around this. But you know, once you've got this capability and hardware, in the same way when we put GPUs in servers and CPUs in desktops, then people started to be able to play games. And then they started to be able to use them for artificial intelligence and machine learning. I think is that the same model that you think this evolutionary path will go down? Do you think Dell's positioning itself as a supplier of these unique things, expecting it to be a long evolution, or are you hoping for a fast ramp? So to, to reach the ultimate value in the full set of use cases will be a fairly long evolution. We've already started with uh, Project Monterey that we're going to talk about a little bit later. And um, there are a number of uh, industry efforts underway to sort of bring the ecosystem together to make these devices much more usable and much uh, more straightforward to uh, integrate into solutions and into a customer's operating environment. And what, and as we'll talk about later, we know from the deployment in the large uh, scale cloud providers that mm -hmm. the business value will be there. And, and we believe that I business see. value is and will continue to translate to enterprise SMB and edge deployments and telco. So in effect, we're seeing this, this model proven in the large scale clouds and you're saying it'll go there first. We'll get critical mass. We'll get manufacturing, scaled manufacturing proof of, you know, the software will be tested out and that will then move out of the off-premise off-prem clouds onto the on-prem clouds over time as enterprise IT is ready for that. So yeah. it'll be a proven technology. That, well, about that, That's right. Yeah. Well, that's just about all we have time. I hope we were able to give you a bit of insight into introducing what a DPU is and how it operates.